So here we are ready for the next one. So yeah, this question, well, how do I get my stuff back if I've closed the shell? I mean, is there any better lead for what we're talking about now? So basically what we'll do here is we'll write a program, which is like writing our order for the server, whatever. And then it gets sent off. We can do other things. We can close the shell, whatever. And we come back and we can see what the results are. And that lets us, um, well, close the shell, leave, go do something else. So the results appear on the disk, on the file system. And you would look at the output files to see what comes there. Uh, should we start with the first batch script? Yeah, let's, let's start yeah. with that one. So we see an example here. Uh, if we go through the different lines, the first line, if you can point to it, is a hash bank bin bash. And oh, that basically means this is going to be run with the bash shell. So all the bash stuff we've been learning can still be applied here. So, the... so, so the question here is that we basically tell the queue that when the queue will run this script, it will use this thing called bash, which is the terminal to execute all of the rest of the stuff. So this is basically like how, what tool it should use to interpret all of the commands that come after this. Yeah. Okay. And then the next three lines should look familiar. So there's the hash sign and s batch, which tells it that Slurm is going to be reading these things. So in bash and many other programming languages, this hash sign is the comment symbol. So for bash, these are comments, but for Slurm, it will see them and read them. Yeah. So, and... so, so uh, yeah, Slurm, like we previously used with the S run, we used these dash dash options to give like time and memory. And we can give them in command line, but we usually in these scripts, we want to make certain that the queue system can read them and the queue system has its own syntax. And this is important, like it's it's specific syntax. So you cannot like add extra extra stuff there. Uh, and and it's it's not chat GPT, so it cannot like infer uh, that if, you, if something is typed uh, in a different way, uh, that you meant probably this. It will read this, set, this specific kind of a comment called s batch uh, when mm -hmm. when reading these, and then it interprets it as a instruction yeah. to, it, to the queue. Yeah. And all the same options we've been learning apply for s run and s batch. So the next line is an echo, which is basically like a print statement, and it says, "Hello, user, you're on node. This node the date is." And this dollar sign uh, parentheses syntax means it runs the date program and then inserts the output here. Um, if you run date from the command line, you'll see what date does. And then finally, there's two more comments and then the s run python slurm pi.py. Uh, this is python, not python 3. So if yeah, your cluster doesn't have python. Um, but the program should run with both Python 2 and Python 3. So in that yeah. last line, why do we have s run there again? Can we just say Python slurm pi.py? Yes, we can. Like we can leave the s run out, but the s run uh, means that the slurm will think of this as a job step and it will like do extra monitoring for that job step. And it can also like do fancy stuff like like give a certain amount of resources for this step and certain amount of resources to another step. So basically in your script, you could have, could have things like, okay, with what give a one CPU and this amount of memory for one process and then start another process that does another with certain other, another resources. This is very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, so most often this is used because we want to emphasize that, okay, this is the, the heavy part of the calculation. And we want to get extra mm -hmm. monitoring from this part of the calculation. Uh, in yeah. certain, like when we get to the parallel part, there's also like certain things that 
are uh, like when we're doing parallel calculations, uh, we sometimes need to use S run for specific kinds of parallel calculations. Mm -hmm. Should we, I mean, this is basically out. it, the lesson. I guess we can do one demo and then go to exercises. Does that sound good? So should yeah. we do this? Oops. And yeah. now this is interesting because we have to be combining more things we learned yesterday. So we have to be in a directory. We have Sorry. to edit a file using nano or whatever editor you would like. We have to use sbatch to submit it. We have yeah. to use the uh, Q commands to see when it's done running. Then we have to run ls to see what new files appeared, and then look at that contents of that file. Yeah, un unfortunately, Zoom wants to constantly uh, modify the, <laughs> the Zoom <laughs> share size and not the size of the actual mm -hmm. document. So mm -hmm. yeah, sorry about that. OK. So let's so here let's we are on this example. Yeah. So are you on your computer? Can you do host name to verify you're on the right computer? Uh -huh. No. So we need I'm to exit. Completely different one. OK. So we're on the login node now, and we're in the HPC examples directory. Yes. And what we just did here, we just ran the stuff to verify where we are before we start doing things. This is always a good idea. OK, so, let's... so we're going to use nano to op make, open a file called run-py.sh. And I guess we can type this. Yeah. So the shebang line to tell it to use bash. You, you can, of course, copy it, but, but just for the uh, sake yeah. of like visualization, I'll write it out. Yeah. OK, so time, memory, and output. So this tells it the output file it will be written to. And if you don't give anything, there's some default name that's like slurm, uh, slurm dash the job ID, which works fine for basic testing. But sometimes it's nice to give an output. Hello, your username. You're on node host name. The time is date. OK, and then you don't need the comment slurm uh, oh. slash. Yeah. And Python 3, maybe. Yeah, maybe Python 3. Mm -hmm. OK, so are you sure that we're in the right directory to run this? Like, does the file slurm pi.py exist? So yeah, so if we, yeah. we can use uh, less, for example, to to check uh, the less is like in the Linux uh, shell tutorial. There's example of how to use less, which is a, like a pager that you can check contents mm -hmm. of a file. So we have written slurm pi dot pi. So I press yeah. Q to e exit less, and I will mm -hmm. uh, check if there's slurm pi dot pi with yeah. ls. And, it and this is. Yeah, this is a common thing that happens. Like you write the script, but the program doesn't exist because you're not in the directory you think you are. Mm. Okay, should we submit it? Yes, let's submit it into the queue. So sbatch. So, I, uh, uh, run, run, run. I... Okay. Yeah. And then we'll do sq or slurm q. Oh, it's already. Uh, well, so it it's already finished. If we do ls we see there is a file named pi.out. So that's probably good. Should so you it. look at it? Yeah, I'll, with I less. use the less again. Hey, there it is. So hello, your username. You're on some node. The time is something. And then the output from the program. So it worked. Yes, and it ran on, on some other, uh, yeah. other machine. OK. So with that, are we good for the exercises then? Yes. I mean, I'll, I'll... I think. Yeah, go right ahead. I think y'all can probably figure out the rest. Um, I don't think there's anything really very new here. 
just looking at some queue resources, checking. Yeah, this is all stuff we've done. Yeah. I'll, Should we give 20 or 25 minutes for the yeah. exercises? I'll quickly mention that uh, like when we are talking, you, you can sometimes hear we say things like uh, bash, and sometimes we say s batch, and sometimes we mm. do stuff like that. They are different words, even if we if we mess up the pronunciation. So bash <laughs> and s batch, uh, the like slurm batch. It's it's basically from that, and bash is I don't know like where it even comes from. It's so old from the eighties or something. So. Uh, you can't yeah. know, but but basically, if you hear these words, it's very important to no notice the difference. So bash is the terminal we're using, and s batch is the queue system batch, like processing, like submit something to the queue, submit the script to the queue, and these s batch comments are comments for this program. So so. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. It might get confusing, but but try to try to like remember that if if something yeah. sounds a bit different, it might uh, might be because it is. But yeah, let's let's go to the exercises. So yeah. these exercises uh -huh. are very important because like most of the jobs you're going to be running in the cluster are jobs that are not going to be interactive. Like you, Do you want like, to scroll down and show the exercises? Yes. Yeah, and I mean, you can try what you like. There is some really basic ones, some more advanced ones. You can go read the other shell stuff from yesterday if you'd like. Basically, use the time as you'd like. You can ask us questions about anything. Yes, and and. It's a good idea to ask in the notes because then we can like like previously we can uh, then go through the the questions in the notes in detail. In, we'll probably go through some of the solutions as well because they show some like philosophical things uh, sometimes. But but yeah, most yeah. likely uh, it's it's good idea to ask in the notes. Yes. Okay. So switching back to notes here. I've already been entering the things here. And yeah, OK. So uh, I brought down back at 15 minutes past the hour. OK. So I guess we're good then. So yep. see you later then. Hi, welcome back. We are back from the break and from the exercises. So now there's been a lot of good questions in the uh, notes. So let's go through them. And, and then we can probably go through one or two of the exercises uh, that yeah. emphasize some of these points here. OK, so let me know when to scroll as we're reading here. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. We can focus on what's not answered already, I guess. Yeah. So quickly to mention again, uh, is s batch a command or a comment? So it's a it's a comment to the s batch command. So that <laughs> might sound like a bit convoluted, but it's like the s batch command. When you give it a script, you give it some file, it will read that file, and it will read those comments. And from those comments, it will determine what resources your script needs. Then it takes the script and it keeps it to itself until it finds a correct place where it can run the script. And then when it gets the correct place, so the correct table in the analogy, uh, when it finds the correct place, it will put the uh, script there and it will execute the script. So the S batch comments are for the script so that the script can know what uh, resources it should reserve. Mm -hmm. Where should files be made? Maybe we can talk about that in storage some. Yes. There's different yeah. time formats. Yes. So Slurm, about the time formats, so Slurm has like a million different uh, parameters. <laughs> 
So sbatch command has and srun has. So the most common ones we are listing here, but you can check them either our references or the uh, documentation itself for like all of these different variations. Slurm can do a lot of other things as well. So so but but usually like these are the most common ones you're going to be using, but you can give it all kinds of like fancy commands. Uh, but we are not going to go through all of them. But time format, we are using this hours, minutes, seconds format because it's yeah. visually pleasing. And but yeah. there are others as well. Okay. So let's scroll. Uh, scroll. Bit. How do we leave the editor? Yes. View leave quitting. Don't see any jobs running. Well, that's because it finished very quickly. Yes. This yeah, but, but when true. you when you run sbatch and you give it the script, you will usually see something like submitting a script and then you give a number. Mm -hmm. And that number is the ID that the queue knows that, okay, like you can later on use this number to see information about this job. Like everybody gets a ticket, like, like a queue system. Everybody gets their own queue number. And this number constantly mm -hmm. goes up. So it doesn't mean that like if you're number one million and something that there's million people in front of you, it just means that you're the next number yeah. in the in the numbering. So these many jobs have gone through the queue previously, yeah. uh, and and then uh, like the it will like give control back to you. So then the Slurm will just take the script and submit it. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Debugging, maybe we can talk about in the final Q and A at the end. Mm, yeah, is it possible to do anything that will affect or break the server for other people? And that's a lot of text. I think the last one is basically if you could break something for other people, then that's our problem. So you can't delete anyone else's files. You can't use up more than your quota of disk space. You can run a bunch of stuff on the login node, um, but that's not affecting all the other, most of the cluster where jobs running. One thing that used to be a problem was disk IO bandwidth, like um, making too many small files that would take up all the network access. Maybe let's talk about this at the end. Yeah, yeah, this well, is that, something that affects, yeah. can affect many clusters, so so we can yeah. talk about it. Uh, I will also mention that one thing that wasn't actually mentioned there is that, like, one thing that you can do bad is to give access to like some other person to using mm -hmm. your credentials to mm -hmm. the cluster. So you shouldn't ever do that. You shouldn't give your password and stuff like that because then, are like, let's say like a spam sender gets access to the cluster and suddenly they have like hundreds of nodes that can send spam emails or do crypto mining or something like that. Yeah. Like that's, that's not something we want. So, <laughs> so uh, be mindful of your uh, passwords and security mm. and that sort of thing. And, and if you see anything, if you see something reported, like that's, that's the mm -hmm. usual thing. If you see something like that doesn't seem normal. Yeah. Next question, can we include other thing in bash scripts like virtual environments? I don't yes, that's a really great question. And I think you can tell exactly where this is going. So anything you would do in the shell, you can do in the script to set up and do things. Yeah, so so the idea behind like scripting and, and writing these, like why are we using the terminal in the first place? Like. The idea is that we can write a lot of different like procedures, what lots of arbitrary things like create a folder, make an output file here, copy this file here, mm -hmm. and like make certain that my code is running correctly, compile this thing. We can all of that write into these scripts. And then we can let the queue run these scripts on a machine somewhere else. So we can we can write all kinds of things in the script that like set up our environment, set up our virtual environments, set up uh, the things that our code needs. And then we can let the queue handle the running in some other machine. And you can close the connection. You can just like leave the cluster. Once you have submitted the job and you notice that it's made it running, you can leave the cluster and go, go 
to have a holiday or something i don't know like and when you come back from the holiday your jobs are finished or, or you can like put them running through the weekend or something like you don't have to be there when the job is running what you need to do is write the instructions how to run the job and this is the power of these uh non-interactive serial jobs so so this is why we use the terminal this is why we use these scripts so that you can do all kinds of stuff there like yeah that this is very important and a very good question yeah um okay most of these i think are answered that let's do an example yes so i think there were more votes for exercise number five okay so i'm switching to simo screen yeah so, um so exercise so, number five so let's demonstrate this yeah. so so there were questions of how do you see the output of your code we will talk mm -hmm. about monitoring in in the next section but let's this exercise already like paves the way there so what we do want to do is we want to create a slurm script that runs the following program so let's create a slurm script so yeah. uh, let's call it exercise five uh, for example mm -hmm. and and i will just copy copy this so this is the program i want to run yeah and over here we want to add the usual okay. suspects so yeah so this might seem like something um so you notice that i'm not even looking when i'm writing yeah. this because i've been <laughs> writing this so many times so you get mm -hmm. accustomed to the to the stuff so um like these kinds of things, you always want to write mm -hmm. the same same lit literature. Like mm -hmm. this is something you use all the time. Yeah. So. Can we set an output file name? Yes. Like what mm -hmm. about uh, output monitor test or something? Yeah. Or are we going to move this to the next one to monitoring? Well, anyway, yeah. So yeah. monitor test. Okay. So let's save it. And should we submit it? And then if we slurm Q, do we see it running? Yeah. OK, so someone just submitted a program. And they want to see, is it actually working while it's still running? So we know the output name. There's this cool program called tail. And if you do tail-f yeah. and then monitoring test, so what does tail do? Tail prints the last few lines of a file by default 10. Dash F means follow, which means keep the file open every time it sees a new line, then print that immediately. And this is basically the common thing you need to do. You have a big program that's writing stuff to a file. You want to be watching it to see as it's running to know if it's working okay. This is the pattern to use. So here we see every 10 seconds, which is what that little script does. It prints out a the date. So you could be running a big machine learning training or something like that and tell it, OK, every x iterations, please write out the current state of the training. And then you go in your terminal you do tail dash F for the output file and you're just watching it. Yeah. But and... I would, I would emphasize that like, like this terminal, like while we are watching the output, this is not doing anything like this specific mm -hmm. terminal. If I cancel this job, it doesn't cancel the program. The program is still running on the other machine. We are just seeing what the program prints. So, so through the file system, basically. Uh, so we are not actually right running the program. And this also means that, like, if you're not watching the thing, I wouldn't r leave these tails running mm -hmm. uh, all around the place because, like, if you're not watching the output, is it even like important? <laughs> so right, uh, yeah. Like, like the I output mean... is being written anyways to the disk, so you can watch it whenever you want to watch it. Like, mm -hmm. if I now want to re uh, like go back and watch it, I can go back and watch it, but I don't need to like leave this tail running so that I can see the output. 
uh, I can come back whenever I want. I can log out and I can mm -hmm. come back and, and the job is still running there. Yeah. Okay. Should so we let's... go on to monitoring now? Or yeah, I'll, I'll just cancel. The Do you want to show canceling? Yeah, okay. So with the s cancel command and by copying this job ID, it will stop running. Yeah. Do you want to tail the output file and see what it says? So here we see slurm step D error, it was canceled. So it tells you why it ended. Okay. And, um, and quickly, I'll mention that like in the exercises, if you didn't manage to do the exercise three and four, I recommend like we, are, we don't have now the time to go through them in detail, but it's good idea to at least check check them and check the solutions because like they try to emphasize that like what's what's being run like when you submit a script the slurm takes that script and it will keep that in memory and then it will run when it finds the correct slot to run that script in and mm -hmm. if you modify that script uh like it's not affecting that one that is already in the queue but if you modify the code that the script will run it it, the modifications happen when the script runs in the future. So it comes, becomes a bit like Terminator to like this kind of like, who did I kill your uh, grandmother before I was even born? This kind of thing. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to edit the scripts while they are in the queue. Uh, you don't want to edit the code you're using while you're submitting something else because then you create this kinds of like, okay, what will be actually executed? What am I submitting? It doesn't mean anything anymore, so it's a good idea to to just avoid the whole thing. And when you submit something, do not edit the code anymore because that then that you know what you're getting at that point. Yeah, uh, uh, this is a good question. How to uh, stop the tail? Control C. Yeah. You should do it. Or Command okay. C or con Control. Yeah, I don't know what's in Apple, but. But yeah, probably Ctrl C as well. 